Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Due to popular demand, I'm going to show you how to create a vintage 1960s psychedelic rock poster. I've done a few of these already, but in this tutorial, all the elements will be fully editable since we'll be exclusively using smart objects and smart filters. This tutorial is in two parts. In the first part, we'll design and create the background plate, and in the second part, we'll add your subject and finish it with psychedelic text. Open an image you'd like to place into your poster. It could be color or black and white. The first step is to make a selection around your subject so we can separate it from its background. There are many ways to make selections and your choice should depend on the characteristics of your image. For this image, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. I'll drag the tool inside the subject to select it and then press Ctrl or Command J to cut and copy it to its own layer. Next, create a new document by pressing Ctrl or Command N. Let's name it Poster. Change the pixels to inches. Make the width 17, the height 25, and the resolution 72 pixels per inch. Then click OK. This is the actual print size used by many vintage rock posters. Click your foreground color and pick a color you like. I already know the color I want, so I'll type it in. 0, 0, B, D, F, F. Once you pick your color, write down its hexadecimal number and the general name of its color. You'll need it later. Your foreground color is now the color you just picked. To fill the background with your foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Let's set up some guidelines to show your document's exact center. Go to View and click New Guide Layout. If you don't see this, you're probably using a version of Photoshop earlier than CC. But don't worry, I'll show you what to do in a moment. Type in 2 for the numbers in columns and rows. Then click OK. If you didn't see New Guide Layout, under View, click New Guide. Next to Position, type in 50% and click OK. Then go back to View and click New Guide again. Tick the Other Orientation and type in 50%. Invert the foreground and background colors by pressing X on your keyboard or clicking this icon. Now white is your foreground color. Open your Custom Shape tool and click Pixels. If you're working on version CS5 or earlier, the pixel icon is here. Open the Shape Picker and click the gear icon on the right to open your shape presets. Click Symbols, and when this message pops up, click OK to replace your current shapes with the shapes from Symbols. In this case, my current shapes didn't change because I chose Symbols earlier. Click this icon, whose shape is called Registration Target 2. Click this icon, tick Unconstrained, and check From Center. Zoom out of your document by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard twice. Go to the center and drag out an oblong shape extending past your document and release. To fit your document back onto your canvas, press Ctrl or Command 0. Go to Filter, Distort, and Twirl. Click the minus sign at the lower left until you can see the twirl effect in the preview window. 
I'll make the angle 222 degrees, but feel free to play with the amount. Then, click OK. Double-click the thumbnail of the twirl to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the Color Box. Pick a color for the twirl. Since I already know the color I want, I'll type it in. E A 1 7 5 4. Once you pick your color, write down its hexadecimal numbers and its general color. Then, click OK on both windows. Let's name the layer Inner Twirl. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Name this layer Frame. Open your Pencil Tool and Pencil Picker. Make the size 100 pixels and the hardness 100%. Then press Enter or Return. Open your Rounded Rectangle Tool and click Path. If you're working on CS5 or earlier, the Path icon is here. Make the radius 300 pixels. Click the gear icon and tick Unconstrained. Then press Enter or Return. Go to the upper left corner of your document and drag the tool to the opposite corner. Right click on the path and click Stroke Path. Make sure the pencil tool is shown here and Simulate Pressure is unchecked. Then click OK. To hide the path, press Enter or Return twice. Open your pencil tool by pressing B on your keyboard. Now paint in the empty areas at all four corners. Double click on the thumbnail of the frame layer to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the Color Box. Pick a color you like for your frame and as before, write down its hexadecimal numbers and its general color. Then press Enter or Return. Click Stroke and the Color Box. We'll use the same color as we picked for our background. Find the hexadecimal numbers you wrote down for it and type it in. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. The size is 7 pixels and the position is outside. Then click OK. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. I'll name it Outside Frame Burst. Open your Polygon tool and choose Pixels. Type in 99 for the size. Click the gear icon, check Star, and indent the sides by 70%. Zoom out of your document and go to the bottom middle guideline. Drag the starburst shape past the top corners of your poster. Rotate the shape so it lines up with the center vertical guideline. Then release and fit it back onto your canvas. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of the frame to make a selection of its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the starburst. Double click the layer to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the Color Box. Type in your background color and press Enter or Return twice to close both windows. Let's hide the guidelines by pressing Ctrl or Command H. In part 2, we'll finish our poster by adding our subject and psychedelic text. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.